How does the Lord see you? Now he sees us as someone whom he has accepted. He sees you as someone he has accepted. He adopted you. He took hold of your life and he said, I want you in my family. So at that moment when you were born again, you became a child of God. Every time he sees you, he sees a child of God. He sees someone, therefore, who belongs to him. Someone whom he has chosen. He sees, therefore, someone who he loves. When he sees you, he sees someone in whom he lives. Every time he looks at you, he sees, I live in him, I live in her, I live in them. He lives in you. He looks at you and says, I'm living in that one. So when God looks at you, he sees someone for whom his son died. So when he looks at you, he says, it was worth me sending Jesus to die for him or to die for her. Because if, if I hadn't given the life of my son, he or she could not belong to me, could not be in my family, and I could not live in that person. He sees you as a saint. He sees you as one who is in Christ because on that day you were born again, He took hold of you and He put you into Christ so that His life became your life and His love became your love and His joy became your joy and His peace became your peace and His healing became your healing and His, His everything became yours. God sees that you have all the authority of the kingdom. He sees that you have the same authority as was invested in Jesus because he's the head of the king. And he sees therefore that you have authority over all the power of the evil one. He sees that you have authority over all the power of the devil. He looks at you and he says, now in him, in her, there is one who is greater than anyone in the world. He sees you and he sees an authority in you that can cast any demon out of anyone. He, he sees in you an authority that is greater than any of the powers of darkness. Now he doesn't see that this is what you need to become. He sees you as this is what you already are. Now we want to say, oh, hallelujah, he sees me in Christ. He sees me as one who belongs to him. He sees me as one who is accepted and approved of him. He sees me as one who is made just, who is justified, made righteous in his sight. He sees me as one who is sanctified, made holy. Oh, he sees me in my position, seated in heavenly places in Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah, he does. And he says, but why aren't you living like that?
It's not that God will clobber you, it's just that when you don't respond to what he says, you make yourself vulnerable. Why? Because, well, the only one who doesn't do what God says is the enemy. Right? He opposes the word of God, doesn't he? So you make yourself vulnerable when you oppose what God wants to do in your life. And who knows there's no middle ground. You either do it or you oppose it. well as I do exactly where you stand in relation to God. And let me tell you, He knows too. You know whether you desire holiness. You know whether you really are living in obedience. You know whether you're walking close to the Lord. You know whether you're a praying person. You know whether you're a willing servant. You know whether you're laying down your life for others. You know whether you love them with the same love with which He loved you. Equally, you know if you're backslidden. You know if you're compromising. You know if you're not born again. You know if you've been resisting God in some way. You know if you're religious. And he says, listen, the only ones that are actually enjoying my best are the faithful ones. They all have my best, but they're the only ones enjoying it. They're the only ones that are living in that fullness of life. The others have it, but they're not enjoying it. They're not, they're not seeing the benefit of it. They're not reaping that wonderful, wonderful harvest that God has sown into our lives. So he sees that so many of us deprive ourselves of the very joys and the, and, and the, very, the, the, the very sort of ex explosiveness of his presence in our lives. And that saddens him because he loves us so much. But you see, he, he sees also that, that we get frustrated because we know there must be more. And we say, Lord, give me more. He says, no, no, it's not a question of me giving you more. You already have what I've given you. It's just getting your life sorted out. Getting your relationship with me sorted out. Because I want you to have my best. 